Hi, everybody. Welcome to week 10. This is our final week of the class. And um, we're going to be talking about evangelicalism and really pushing forward our theme of religious experience and how to think about and understand religious experience. So I know this is our last week in the class, and I'm, but I'm asking that um, try to put in one last push here um, with, the, with the reading, because I think this is an important book, and I think it's a book that you'll like once you get into it. Um, our book today for this week is When God Talks Back. Um, and this was an important book in religious studies, and specifically on the topic of evangelicalism. Um, and I thought I'd give a little bit of an introduction to evangelicalism. First of all, I think if you were to define the dominant religious trend in this area, meaning Appleton, where Lawrence is located, I think you would have to say it's evangelicalism. Um, there are huge churches. If you go north of the 41, uh, you'll see, you'll run into the Appleton Alliance Church, the Pathways Church, pretty close to each other. Those are huge churches. Appleton Alliance, before the pandemic, was having, you know, four or 5,000 people per Sunday. You know, we live in an area of, you know, you know, Appleton has something like 75, 80,000 people. That's a sizable number of people who go there. On the south, heading out towards Lake Winnebago and Menasha, you'll get to Christ the Rock, another huge church, I think three or 4,000 people there on a Sunday pre-pandemic. So, um, and then there's lots of smaller examples, um, storefront churches that I could point to. There's lots of things. Um, this is, in terms of numbers and dominance, extremely important form of spirituality in the United States. Um, uh, that's true about Appleton, and I think you could um, uh, go a lot of places in the United States, and you find that that is the case, that this is just an, you know, a very powerful experience for people and something that really draws in the largest numbers. Now, when I say most popular, I'm obviously not saying most important or somehow better. I think there's a lot to be critical about with evangelicalism. Um, I kind of, as a religious studies professor, I make it a little bit of my business to visit places. So I'm always up for going to uh, places of worship, go to mosques in Dearborn and more closer at home. Um, and here on weekends before the pandemic, I used to go to try to visit all the different churches that I could just to get a sense of what's going on. Um, these are powerful centers of interest and in worship uh, here in Appleton. Now, what is evangelicalism? Uh, let me just kind of give a quick historical look at this. All right, so here we are. Um, that is my hand. But here we go. We've got Christianity. Right, and we when we saw in the Gospels, right? This goes back to first century A.D., right? Uh, that develops. There's a lot of arguments and developments, but that becomes um, the Catholic Church in Europe. Now, that is going to in 1520 is going to be the date of the Reformation, and that will lead to Protestantism with Martin Luther and John Calvin and a bunch of reformers coming uh, after that date, and then uh, Catholicism. Um, there's, you know, there's the Orthodox, there's other branches of Christianity, but these are really two main ones that connect to um, us here in Wisconsin um, and in Appleton, right? There's strong Catholic presence um, that's always been the case on these um, you know, Chicago, Milwaukee, up to Appleton, um, and then uh, forms of Protestantism. Now, Protestantism is itself really split into a couple different branches. On the one hand, there's mainline, that's kind of the usual word for it, mainline Protestants. And these are members of long-standing historic denominations. The Evangelical Lutheran Church of America, um, the Presbyterian Church, uh, most Methodist denominations, lots of Baptist denominations. They've been around and they tend to be fairly liberal. You could, um, uh, they are uh, uh, at least um, working with contemporary trends, social trends in the United States. 
Um, and then on the other hand, there are what you could call evangelicals. And they are often very critical and hostile toward contemporary uh, changes. For example, gay marriage or um, abortion, um, just uh, all kinds of social questions. Evangelicals represent a very conservative response and mainline Protestants often a very accommodating response. Um, and what we're gonna be looking at are, is this group of evangelicals. Um, uh, much more conservative, I guess you'd say socially than would be the common to find at Lawrence among students so far as I have um, noticed. Now a password for this group would have been fundamentalist. They were people who were often kicked out of mainline churches um, with their, because they were unwilling to accommodate modernist thinking about the Bible and so on. Um, but it'd be rare to call someone a fundamentalist these days unless they're really far out on the, on the edges. And most kind of um, people in this camp would identify themselves as evangelicals. Um, let me just switch it back to me. Okay, our book offers an interesting definition of evangelical. So on page 13, um, our, the author says, um, evangelicals share three main commitments. One, literal or near literal truth of the Bible. In other words, they read the Bible, the stories we read in Genesis, the creation story of seven days. And it's not something that is difficult to interpret. It's literally, as it reads on the face of it, true. God created, often God created the world in seven days. Um, there was a biblical worldwide flood. Uh, Abraham lived, you know, just all these stories are absolutely true. Number two, um, one can be saved by choosing a personal relationship with Christ or being born again. This concept of born again is um, uh, the fact that everyone has to kind of individually choose for themselves this new life um, uh, is, is another hallmark of evangelicalism. And finally, belief that one should evangelize and share the good news of salvation with others. We've already been kind of thinking about missions and um, evangelizing. Um, I haven't read your responses on that question yet, but I'm very interested in doing that. Um, and evangelicals see that as being uh, very much a part of their duty as Christians is to share this message with others, all right? Um, so why we're looking at evangelicals is because they represent a kind of uh, farthest extent of thinking about relationship with God. So if you, if you talk with an evangelical, if you listen to a sermon, which I hope we'll do um, towards the end of the week, um, you'll hear an emphasis on personal relationship that 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 Christianity isn't a religion, it's a relationship with Jesus. Um, and, and that if you are a Christian, that you can have access to God in a kind of friendly, personal way in which you might even hear a voice in your head. And if you listen to someone talking about prayer, maybe they'll say, you know, God told me to do this. Um, and so that I think gives us a couple different places to go. On the one hand, that seems very distant from a lot of our experience of God, I imagine. Um, so how do we handle that kind of talk? Do we just say, well, that's someone else's experience and you know, I'm not gonna judge it, but it, that seems weird to me and they can have that. Or is there some way that we can understand what's happening and that language as reflecting common um, uh, human ways of thinking and being. In other words, could we kind of break down that language and understand that that's putting a certain, it's a way of talking about things that are happening in, happening in our mind that we all know and recognize. That to me is the real plus about this book is that she ends up being able to say, it's not strange, it's not a claim to weird experience that's over and beyond what normal humans understand, it's a way of talking about the operations in our mind. And it kind of brings that experience a little bit closer and makes it more understandable. And I really like that um, part about this. Um, 
uh, let me just look at a couple things. This is in the preface, um, page uh, 19 of the preface, X1X. This is her um, exam statement of why she's choosing um, to, to study evangelicals. Um, I set out many years ago to understand how God becomes real for modern people. I chose an example of the style of Christianity that would seem to make the cognitive burden of beliefs, belief most difficult. The evangelical Christianity in which God is thought to be present as a person in someone's everyday life, in which God's supernatural power is thought to be immediately accessible to that person. So there it is from the author. Why did she choose evangelicalism? Because it was a kind of outlier in the immediacy of which it talks about religious experience of the divine. And that is that drew her to studying this group. And I think that's interesting here in our class, right? We've had these last four weeks, we've talked a lot about religious experience, and here we are in a kind of extreme version of that, understanding uh, a religious tradition that speaks very immediately about God's inner connection uh, to a person. Um, the, the methods that uh, our author is going to use can be described as um, an anthropological kind of approach. This is participant observation. So she is going to join um, the vineyard church near where she lives and go to meetings and talk to people. And that will be um, her method for, um, uh, for reporting on this group. I think you'll see that once again, just like with the Dalrymple book on uh, religious lives in India, this is someone who's responding with curiosity, not judgment, and at all points looking to make connections and understand the people that she is interacting with. All right. Um, uh, what, uh, and I'd ask you to kind of work with a similar way, with curiosity and interest in trying to understand evangelicals. You know, we live in very polarized times in terms of politics and uh, religion is often connected to those politics. So if you hear the word evangelical, a lot of you will associate that and rightly because that's what the numbers say with um, uh, Trump and Republican um, ideas about social values of, of various kinds. And um, let's put that aside and let's think instead about how we can understand the religious claims and experiences that are being reported uh, in this group. Um, and I think you'll see in our author kind of a model of how to deal with that in a, um, in a kind way. Um, what I'm gonna ask you to do for Monday for class is to respond um, to a forum on Moodle. And we're reading chapters one and chapters two of this book. And write something that you find notable about evangelicalism or a question that you have about evangelicalism. And that's what we're gonna try to get on the table on Monday is just an broad issues about evangelicalism. I should be able to call on each of you to say, what did you find interesting? What did you, what question did you have after reading this book and get a, get some um, ideas from you about where we should start our discussion uh, on evangelicalism. Then Wednesday or Friday, we're gonna really dive into the questions of experience and how evangelicalism's talks, evangelicals talk so personally about their experience with God. All right, so I will see you all tomorrow.